Okay, this is a bit of a look around another area of the part of town where I live where let's just say strange things have been happening during the virus times. I've already taken a look at the local dog park area and strangely that area keeps getting a repetition of the same problem over and over and over. The council's come in and put anti-graffiti paint on the table there. They clean it off every second day and it just gets re-graffitied. Hmm. I've also taken a look at the area next to the skate park. Mind you, that wasn't too bad, but I did find some very unusual things there, but I'm not surprised. And this area here really forms what is, I call it the suburb triangle of trouble, okay? Somebody had already posted some information about what was going on here on the Facebook page. I was sent a copy and paste text of that, and you'll be seeing that as I'm gabbling on here. And it doesn't paint a very good picture of what goes on here. So that's why I'm down here to take a closer look. Let's do it. It's a complex area. There's uh, playgrounds like this. I actually did a video here years back. And one of the local ladies called the police on me saying I was taking videos of children. But I see something over here that's caught my eye. Okay, um, this is looking a little bit strange. Let's take a closer look. Uh, first thing I'll say is it's been here overnight. I can see there's uh, moisture on this. It was quite a dewy night. It looks like a little zipped up purse of something. Okay, and next to it, it looks like a, a wallet. It's a sort of wallet that a younger person would use because it's one of these Velcro ones. I wonder if there's anything in this. Hmm, okay. It looks like it's been cleaned out. Mm, I wonder what's going on there. What's that saying to you? That's uh, that's unusual to find. I just opened up the zipper one. There's nothing in that and there are multiple pockets on this and I have gone through this But it's totally empty Very strange I am going to pick this up and I will just ask my friends if there has been anything said on the local Facebook about stuff being stolen That wallet did have some things hiding in it when I went home, I went to bend it. It was still stiff. There is another zipper area that had two things in there. And one thing is a very important thing that I would hate to lose myself. We'll take a look at that at the end of the video. The lovely picnic area here, it doesn't look too bad. I'm not seeing too much graffiti there. Although I can see lots of previous scratchings that have been painted over. And sometimes, let's just say it like this, naughty people will hide things up there. Although if you were doing that, you'd be dealing with a whole bunch of hungry spiders who would be coming out to nip ya. The barbecue area looks good. I did see families here yesterday because everyone's reveling in the uh, tiny bit of freedom that we've got now. I'm just taking a look at this table here. No, it looks good as well, apart from the old etchings. There's quite a few zones to take a look at. I'll try to be as fast as I possibly can and I will close the gate properly. Oh, I found something fairly nice to look at, and I do see a lot of this going on around the suburb, and usually I find naughty stuff, but I found something nice. During the virus times, often people are leaving painted rocks uh, outside their houses on the footpaths, and I've just found one here down at the park, and I will just leave it right there. This is a new clubhouse here for whatever football team. The old clubhouse used to be a real magnet for the local louts. Uh, the new one's the same, and if I take a look around, this area here, you'd be surprised at what I'm going to find. Okay, uh, what we've got here is, and I'm not surprised by the Mentos packets, there's a strong connection with Mentos and what goes on around the suburb. There's a pen there and a lovely beverage and a very, very nice looking bottle and it looks like that beverage was blue. I'm not a drinker so I've got no idea what that's about. I'm just wondering whether that would be uh, a ritzy expensive thing to buy. Hmm. Yeah, so um, that's a very interesting combination of things, I feel. So just around from that little find there, we'll go in underneath the ramp. It'd be a great little zone to come if it was a wet night. You could get under here. It's nice and dry and you could do, well, whatever you want. I was expecting to see a whole bunch of tagging and whatnot here. Uh, it's surprisingly clean. Mind you, it's a fairly new building. And what I can see, I can see people have been here because it's been scuffed up. Mind you, you'll probably find people have had to come in here and clean up before. There is a can just there. And there's what would have been some mints, some Maltesers, a broken bottle there. Um, but it's actually not too bad at all. I was here yesterday and I did notice right in that spot there a customised Gatorade bottle and it's best left set at that and heavily blurred if it is seen. 
I think the people who look after this building have done a pretty good job at keeping it clean. It would be an endless task. There is something out in the car park we're going to take a look at next. So I've got to talk through all this. There's a fitness trainer behind me looking at me very strangely. Yeah, this mess here is talking to me in a couple of different ways. There's been very much a constant of uh, Mentos packets all through the suburb at various locations, and again, it's here. I can also see a little toy cap gun which has been smashed up. Now, that's also a constant. So often, I see big lighters uh, being smashed up in the areas. Um, you know, it's a little children's toy. It's um, it's strange to be down here. I can also see the remnants of what would have been uh, chocolate bars. And there's also a Nutella spread stick thing there. It's lovely hearing those birds chirping in the trees there. It's actually a beautiful day. It's been very cold nights, uh, nice cool mornings. And hopefully the bulk of the naughty rubbish has been cleaned up because as we saw in that Facebook post, uh, they've collected, what is it, five garbage bags of strange rubbish. I'm just going to head around to a more secluded and uh, naughtier part of the park area. I'll just reminisce about this bench here. This is a bench here that got smashed by a tree that came down in the big storm some time back. Made quite the mess and strangely that tree, that one third of it fell over, is still in the park and I don't quite understand why. It's a nice part of the park here because the park has been cut into a cliff area. You've got neighbouring properties whose backyard is basically the park. And if you stand in a spot like this, wow, you can see absolutely everything that goes on down in the park there when there's sporting events on and whatever else goes on at parks. Okay, so I'm getting close to what is basically an epicentre of some nasty, nasty things. It's also an area where sometimes you'll see a, a brush turkey getting about, but I'm not feeling like I'm going to see one today. But I think this area here needs a good looking over. Okay, it's like a little uh, wilderness all to itself in here. And I'll just come around this way, always looking on the ground as I walk around. Hmm. You'd be amazed at what you'll find. Sometimes not amazed as well. And yeah, I do believe that there is an old brushed turkey mound. Uh, that's what it's looking like to me. Yeah, um, it's not as bad in here as I thought. Okay, there's a bit of, uh, looks like dumped building rubbish here. But we'll take a look at these seats out here. Okay, well the first thing I'll do is I'll cover up that customised Gatorade bottle. Yeah, so that's the first indication that uh, things go on down here. And you're probably thinking, well it doesn't look too bad. It's a sort of area where you've got to have to go in and take a much closer look. Now, what I can see here is there's a lot of burnt matches just being put out in the ground here. Obviously some sort of little pyromaniac at play. There's something there that I'm going to have to blur out, and we're not even going to explain what that is, but uh, it paints a picture of uh, what's been going on here. And the sun's come out on me, but I'm just walking in towards one of the seats, and on the ground there is just matches everywhere. Also a few other things, and uh, yes, everything paints a picture of what goes on here in a sort of mental state that the people are in. Yes, it's, uh, it's not nice at all. We'll move on to another area and I'll just grab back my lovely little rag here. Just thinking about setting fire to things, the next day after I made this video, there was a fire set at the picnic area next to the dog park. Remember, I spoke about the triangle of trouble in the suburb. This is another point of that triangle and there's always messes left here. Seeing a fire set here, I'm not surprised at all because there is a pyromaniac getting about in the suburb. One good thing is because the fire brigade had to turn up to put out the smouldering logs, it becomes a reportable offence in the suburb. And I did bump into the person who keeps repainting this table and he told me he was the police and he showed me a police identification badge. He explained to me the way to combat this is to keep removing the graffiti, but the whole suburb has been tagged up. There is graffiti and tags everywhere. In fact, the table gets re-tagged within a day after it's been cleaned off. It's just crazy, and this happens over and over and over. The other troublesome area is the abandoned hardware store, and it's not very far from this picnic area. And looking in there, I can see the damage is far, far worse than a few weeks back. 
And I can also see signs of some very, very troubled minds at play in the abandoned hardware store. Maybe I should go back in there with a video camera and wrap it up as a study of entropy. YouTube loves educational content. Anyway, back to the park I was looking over, we take a look at a rock wall next. I notice down here there's a fence here because there is a cliff here and there is that warning sign there. It says to you to stay on well, one side of this fence, but guess what, I'm going to go on the other side. It is nice to look up there at the cliff and see what's going on. I wouldn't want to be here when it's raining, something might come down and clobber you. But it's uh, not as bad as what I thought it would be considering what was being said online about this area. Mind you, there's something a little bit ragtag there. Uh, I'm not even going to try and touch that. Um, you can see what's going on there. Yes, yeah, some things are best left on the ground and not touched. And the nice thing here is that I'm not seeing any tagging and graffiti. It's sticking out to me. Actually, mind you, <laughs> I spoke too soon. What's that there? Looks like Casper the Friendly Ghost in a, a variation of him at least. Apart from the old graffiti there, I can see something else here. And we must be educational today on YouTube or we get into trouble. I can see the drill lines here that they've done to form this rock wall. Okay, so remember this used to be solid rock at a point. They put a drill down into the rock and then they put a very light charge of explosives and it's called line blasting or sometimes batter blasting. And what that does is the shock from that will set up a very fine fracture in the rock going along to where the next drill hole is and charge of explosives. So that form of blasting gives you a nice rock wall like that and if you go up in the freeways around Sydney, especially up north, you'll see plenty of drill holes like that in the rock faces and you'll also see some fairly steep areas where they've blasted like this. Okay, I'll get away from that cliff face there. I do notice the weather looks like it's gonna turn on me and I'll head down to a lower area that I took a look at yesterday and it was, well, looking a little bit nasty. Okay, this is the area here. I hope what I saw yesterday is still there. I haven't seen the council crews coming through to clean up yet, and they often do. Okay, let's take a closer look down here. Now, the first thing to note, I can see matches on the ground here. There's quite a trail of them. Also a matchbox there. And in fact, if I keep following the match trail along here, uh, you'll be surprised at what I'm going to find. Okay. It's looking a bit nasty there. So it looks like someone comes here at night and, um, well, they like playing with fire. Some strange stain on the ground there and I can see uh, what would have been a bottle of something. Okay, there's uh, obviously two boxes of matches here. There's our favourite little thing to suck on called Mentos. I can see uh, the leftovers of a Bic lighter here. A fine little pyromaniac, whoever's doing this. And I can also see they decided to attack this energy drink bottle and, um, well, put it this way, try to set fire to it, but it looks like it hasn't succeeded. And just in front of that clump of wonderment there, there's another area there that looks like it's been a bit of a burn zone. So, yes, you're a little frustrated local pyromaniac. Um, maybe I can relate to that person a little tiny bit. And I can also see along here, and there's stacks of them, Matches, 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 and uh, the one thing I will say is it looks like they have all been burnt out. I can't see any which have got a red head on them. But that's only the entree. There is a main course to this meal and it resides in the little sink here. It looks like someone's been having a game of fire and water. I mean, what else do you do when you're bored during virus times? Uh, trying to burn up some plastic there. Uh, all sorts of matches here which have been burnt. It looks like some sort of gooey gooey, I don't know what stuff, yucky. But all in all, some fairly strange antisocial behavior. I'm just seeing if the tap works. Oh, it does. So you can come down here for a nice little drink on a hot day if you want. Yes. Uh, just looking around here on the ground. Yeah, there's just matches everywhere. Matches all over the ground, no matter where you look. There's activity here I really don't understand. And remember, someone has to come along and clean all this up. It is curious though, here, the toilet's always open and yet it's not trashed, although I think if I took a closer look down there, that'd be a redback spider toilet zone. You'd be a very daring person using this toilet, I can tell you. Yes, there's a nice big female redback spider and nest going on there. Lovely, isn't it, hey? 
The next place I'm going to take a look at is over there all the mess has been made on the basketball courts. So it looks like what do you do when you're bored? Well you throw sandstone rocks down onto the courts here and it looks like the throw area is uh, somewhere up there. It's a bit of a strange zone this because uh, it's like an in-between spot between the upper part of the oval and that lower section and uh, you've got to traverse these rocks and carefully rock climb your way up here uh, to see what's going on. And I can sort of see by the ground it's a fairly well-worn path and there's a gate there that gets you onto the top oval. And so looking down you can see there's a clear path through there, you can see another path has been cut through here but I can also see, uh, and I dare say it's children, traverse the area through there. I can see all little tracks and paths going through there. And also one going along the fence line here. Yeah, it's a bit like Billy Goat Country for kids. I suppose if you haven't got anything to play on, well, you come down here and you try to break your neck, falling down the rocks here like I'm about to do. Whoa, whoa. Oh, it's okay. I didn't go. Yes, I can see lots of tracks up there. I can also see, it uh, looks like an energy drink bottle there. Uh, there's a packet of shapes there. Yummy, yummy. And there's more billy goat tracks that go up this section here. In fact, they're all through this area. I think it's... I think it's little kids doing this. I mean, it's a sort of... Yeah, I mean, when I was young, I think I was... I was doing stuff like this. Yeah, there's another track up there. I mean, really, I'm just seeing fun activity in a sense. I'm not really seeing anything malicious. Oh, okay, maybe I spoke too soon. Oh, what's going on here? Well, it looks like here uh, someone's come along and had a little party or something. Okay, it's just stuff from the takeaway shop and since the fish and chip shop. But why, why would you leave your rubbish like that here? That's the part I don't quite understand. And what I do notice here, and it's a bit sinister, ooh, look at that little hole there in the, the rock there, hmm. I wonder what lives up here. Would I be daring enough to put my hand up there to find out? I don't think so. Wow, it's quite a sizable hole. Maybe I don't want to know what lives up there. I've just seen another little hole cave thing over just down here. Yes, who do you think lives in there? Ooh, do you really want to know? The mystery of holes in the ground. <laughs> uh, what I will do, because I'm going to be nice to the suburb, is take this over to the bin. I mean, how hard is it to do this? That's the part that really fries me up, and I just see so much littering going on, and it's totally unnecessary. I can see some markings on the ground here. I'm not sure whether it's done by a rock or chalk, but during the virus times around the suburb, there's been lots of things done by children in chalk along the footpaths, and really, maybe that's what that is about. I don't think there's really anything sinister going on there. Okay, I'm heading on to the main oval here, which is the final bit I'm going to take a look at. I don't think there's much here. I do notice the cranky weather is getting a little bit closer, and where I started the video was basically right in the middle of screen there, okay, in the park over there. Then I traversed across to that area there where the clubhouse is around the car park, and then I went along the cliff edge there, just tracking around nice and slow, okay. You can see where the, how the park has been cut into the cliff and then I ended up going into the upper oval area there which is a little bit messed up, nasty area. Then I went across that oval, looked at the blasting area at the back there and then I had a look down there at that little pyro zone and let's not forget that lovely little red back spider nest in the toilet, eh? Woo -hoo -hoo. Down on the oval here yesterday there were lots and lots of people, families everywhere because people have been given a tiny little bit of freedom after the lockdown that's been going on for quite some time now. I just noticed some rubbish on the ground here. I mean, why do people do this? It's just bizarre. Oh, what is it? Okay, oh, something from Coles, a quick sale there. Really nothing to spit your dummy over, but I'm telling you I'm over it. Maybe that's the mental age of the people who are messing up the suburb, hey? They're so stupid and young and they've got dummies still in their mouth. And again, how easy is it to do this? So simple. Now I've got a bonus here for you, an absolute bonus. I'm about to have a big flock of black cockatoos fly over and I'll just keep quiet and zoom in on them and we can enjoy them.
amazing birds they are massive and make a very unusual sound now there is a saying when you get a flock of black cockatoos fly over you're about to have a patch of rain well i think those black cockatoos are talking to me yeah, so I'll leave this area now, and really I think the worst of it happened when that Facebook post went up about a week back. Uh, they've done the bulk of the cleanup around here, but was I surprised when I read what was said on the Facebook post? No, because it's been a massive elevation of weird stuff going on around the virus times. I think there's some fairly bored and troubled people in the suburb, and they're venting it in a strange way. I mean, this morning I saw candles and Mentos packets near the pizza shop and I'm trying to think well what is going on there I mean I've just seen so many unusual things some of them reminded me of problems from years ago which I thought had gone away but I don't know it just seems to be happening over and over and over anyway I hope we learned something in this video about the park which is the other troublesome point of the suburb and uh, if we didn't learn something in this video I get into a stack of trouble as always. I've got a piece to add to the end of this video. Now, when I looked at these down in the park, I thought I looked through them fairly thoroughly, but there's actually a section that I didn't look through. And initially when I saw this and I saw that it was empty, and if you remember, I did look in these areas here, I thought maybe this is a child's toy because sometimes you give your children something like that to play with and I, I semi-passed it off as that, and then it wasn't until I came home and I took a look in this back zipper here and it starts to reveal to me that no, this is not a child's toy, this is actually something that belongs to someone. Okay, the first item, it's an adult Opal car to get you on and off public transport in New South Wales. Uh, most adults would carry this. It's also telling me this is possibly an adult's wallet. There's also a children version of this card and I think pensioner as well. So yes, that's an interesting thing to find. But what's really worrying here is an Easy Money Bendigo Bank FTPOS card. I dare say it's a tap and go card. It looks like it's been fairly used. So a lot of people these days, younger people, younger adults, like going cashless. And that's maybe why the, this wallet was empty or maybe it was stripped out. But what's very upsetting is it's not signed. Now, if you don't sign these and there has been fraud on this card, well, the banks can get a bit cranky with you. There's this little Sherlock Holmes inside of me wondering what's going on here. Now, the part I remember quite clearly was when I found this, I remember seeing this, and I think it was the other side, it was wet. So that said to me it had been there all night. It was quite a dewy night. And I thought, okay, so I was probably the first person to find this. Was it dropped that night, as in earlier in the night or yesterday? Um, and I thought back to this, and... When I went to look at this, if you remember back in the video, I went to look at this and I opened it up and I thought I'd gone through it fairly thoroughly. And actually there was a bit that you didn't see and I went through all these little sections as well. And it wasn't until I came home and I did this, I thought, hang on a second, there's something in this. And of course, the part that I missed down in the park, and it's this section here, and I'm wondering if it has been ratted through and stolen, did the same person also miss this zipper section here? So it's all a bit spooky. Now I am going to put all this back together and I'm going to hand it into Hornsby Police. Now my advice is don't attempt to hand this back personally because it can backfire on you, especially if there's been fraud on the card or there are items missing from the wallet. If you're really unlucky, that person that you're trying to hand it back to is going to flip around and saying, well, you stole my wallet. Yes, things like that can happen. And finding this wallet in the park, well, it just taps into what has been very, very unusual times around the virus times.